time, hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. Are you sure about that? It's a good place. We are in the middle of it, right up on the mountain. If this son of a bitch wants to bitch about his cows over here and shoot at me, well, it's our country. Good evening, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about signaling. Now, this video is going to be divided into two parts, hence the 2.1. This first part is going to be daytime signaling, and the second, uh, much more in-depth part is going to be nighttime signaling. Now, things this video is not going to cover is hand and arm signals. The reason we're not going to be covering hand and arm signal is, number one, this subject has been beat to death on YouTube. Um, Brent0331 has done an absolutely outstanding video on hand and arm signals. Please go watch that if you're interested. The second reason is, hand and arm signals are not adequate for a few serious scenarios. Number one, in deep vegetation or any type of significant distance. And number two, and definitely more important, uh, when the shooting starts, you're not going to be able to communicate with hand and arm signals. You need a visual aid or an audio aid, something more than just hand and arm signals. Now one of the best visual aids you can have is a pair of colored socks in your combat uniform. No, but in all seriousness, we need to destigmify colored socks in combat uniforms. Uh, let me wear the socks I want. I suppose a good place to start would be what is a good signal? Well, a good signal has to be clearly distinguishable from any other signal, and it has to be almost immediately recognizable. Now, while discussing being immediately recognizable, we also need to talk about pace plans. Because what if your first signaling option doesn't go through? Let's say you drop your VS-17 panel or something, and uh, all you have left to signal is a smoke grenade. Is whoever you're trying to signal going to know what you mean? Well, they're not going to if you don't have an established pace plan. So you must have an established pace plan because this is also going to help alleviate any issues with uh, secondary and uh, tertiary uh, signaling. For instance, if your signal to shift fire was a white smoke grenade and your signal to lift fire was a red smoke grenade, but you never had any pace plan put in, you didn't do what you're supposed to, you don't have a pace plan, well, let's just say for some reason your white smoke grenade doesn't work. You don't have any other way to signal, so you throw your left smoke grenade, and instead of shifting fire and still keeping the enemy's head down, they are now lifting fire. And while them lifting fire is definitely a better response than them doing nothing and continue to shoot at the target while you're maneuvering on them, it's definitely not what we wanted to happen, right? Alright, let's go ahead and get into signal options. Um, one of the best, probably the best option, is an audio uh, signal. In other words, voice. There can be no confusing a voice command. You are telling them exactly what needs to happen be simply yelling or um, much better would be over a radio now even over a radio uh, in a gunfight or a loud explosions going off it's going to be hard to hear if you have some electronic ear protection such as peltors or anything uh, considerably like that that's a good alleviation but it's not a hundred percent effective and it relies on batteries another minor issue with voices People can just misunderstand you sometimes. That kind of leads us into our second option. The second option is just simply understanding when to act. So the action itself is the signal. So for instance, here we have a typical battle drill 1 alpha. And if you are the support by fire, as soon as the uh, maneuver element starts maneuvering, you know that's your signal to shift fire. When they're 15 degrees away, you know that's your signal to lift fire. So in some instances, the action itself 
could be the signal. Or in conjunction with audio, it's a essentially part of the pace plan. You know when to shift fire, you know when to lift fire, but it's still going to be called out. All right, moving on from there, I suppose one of the uh, next options we should cover is uh, one of the most common is using smoke to signal. Now, using smoke to signal is definitely probably the most visual signal we have. It's the one that's going to stand out the most. Anola Gay is a company that comes to mind when it comes to civilians getting their hands on smoke grenades. Uh, some of the smoke grenades they are putting out can produce just as much, arguably if not more smoke, than a military smoke grenade. Now some issues with uh, smoke grenades. Well, number one, they're not light. Um, if you're planning on using smoke grenades specifically, you want to rethink that plan because they're not light and you don't want to be lugging around five smoke grenades. Number two, um, what is your pace plan going to be? Are certain colors going to represent certain things? For instance, could red be marking a target? Could green be shift fire or lift fire? Um, could white be strictly for obscurement? Um, could yellow be to identify friendlies, etc., etc.? We could go on forever with this. Now, one big issue with smoke is we cannot control the wind. Now let's go back to our handy dandy Battle Drill 1 Alpha graph here. And let's say you throw a red smoke grenade to signal to shift fire. But the wind is blowing from west to east. Now you just effectively obscured the entire support by fire's visual. Now could they shoot through the smoke? Sure, but they can't, you know, effectively engage point targets through smoke. That's just not going to happen. So that's something we definitely have to consider. And also, if you're throwing smoke to obscure yourself, you're also doing the exact opposite. Um, nothing is going to make you stick out more than a huge cloud of smoke just randomly mm -hmm. popping up in the woods. Everybody's going to know somebody is over there now. Now, the next signal option we're going to talk to is uh, my personal favorite, the VS-17 panel. Now you can get these a full size VS-17 panel and cut them down and you can have a signal option for pretty much your entire squad. Um, my personal favorite is to cut them essentially into the sheet of a paper and tie them to about three chem lights and what you've done is you basically now have a wolf's tail and a flaming rock all in one. Uh, we'll cover the wolf's tail in the next video but a flaming rock, I'll show a demonstration here in a little bit, is essentially a uh, bright piece of material, in this case a VS-17 panel, thrown to something moderately heavy, i.e. a rock, or in this case, uh, three chem lights, and you can throw it to signal. Or you can swing it around like a buzzsaw also. This is another very good option. You can also use a VS-17 panel to essentially uh, do a flash as a signal. And what this means is just flashing the VS-17 panel up and down as a signal. What you don't want to do is rely on a number of flashes as a signal. What I mean by this is you wouldn't want your pace plan to be one flash is for shift fire, two flashes is for lift fire. And to demonstrate this, pretend, look away from your phone for a little bit, pretend you're yelling at your machine gunner to do a damn barrel change, and then look back and tell me how many flashes I did. A better option is to do the length of time that it's exposed. For instance, shift fire could be a quick flash, just up and down, and then lift fire could be it's held up for about five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, you need a difference in time to where it's unmistakable. There's no mistaking somebody holding a uh, VS-17 panel up for five seconds for a quick flash. And you can also do these over and over again, and they still mean the same thing. Now, believe it or not, I've actually found that in heavy, dense vegetation, like we have here in the... Uh, Midwest, a laser, a strong laser actually lurks well for uh, signaling also. Now these are by no means the only options you have for signaling, but in my opinion these are the best options we have for signaling. Um, the smoke is definitely by far the most utilized, probably overutilized honestly by the military. The VS-17 panel is probably the uh, best option for light operations I would say. It has the least amount of weight, it is the most versatile in my opinion, and you don't have to worry about the wind being able to mess it up. 
For instance, if your pace plan for shift fire is number one, voice. So you call them over the radio, shift fire, shift fire. They don't respond. Okay, now I'm going to th throw a flaming rock, a VS-17 panel attached to a couple uh, chem lights. Throw that out there, they don't respond. Okay, now I'm going to throw a white smoke. If for some miraculous reason they didn't throw a white smoke, then you just have... You're just going to have to send a runner over there, because they're not going to get it at that point. Now we still have lift fire, so what is the pace plan for lift fire going to be? Are we still going to use audio? Sure. But after that, are we going to use a flaming rock again? Are we going to have two of those on us? Or are we just going to go straight to smoke? Are we going to use a different color smoke? And then once we're maneuvering, we can't send a runner again, so that takes it out of the question. This is where it comes into the person conducting the actions has to know when they're going to conduct the actions without a signal. Now this is fairly easy for something like lift fire, everybody knows it. 15 degrees you're lifting fire, shifting fire. So that's fairly easy. But what if it's something that's not? What if a breach is opened up and for some reason somebody lost their VF-17 panel? Now we can't mark it correctly. Mm -hmm. Scenarios are like this are when pace plans become incredibly important. And just like communications, pace plans show the weaknesses of the plan in signaling. A poor pace plan when it comes to signaling could be the difference between somebody calling for fire on your position or calling for fire on the enemy's position, depending if you just simply use the wrong color smoke grenade. Alright guys. That is it for this part of the video. Stay tuned for part two. If there's anything you think I missed in part one for daytime signaling, put it in the comments. Let me know uh, what some of your uh, SOPs are or your pace plans are. Throw them in the comments. Um, my personal pace plan with audio is always first. Um, there's no misconstruing me telling you exactly what to do. You can't confuse that. Uh, and then second would be some type of heavy visual, so smoke, uh, or personal, v my personal choice would be a VS-17 panel, if that's possible. But again, in heavy vegetation, you might not even be able to see a bright orange VS-17 panel. So stay tuned for part two, I'm going to cover nighttime signaling. It's going to be much more in depth, because I'm going to be covering not only signaling at night but under nods not under nods and also under thermal because all of those things have various different um, options for signaling like if you have night vision you don't really want somebody to be throwing out red lights but if you don't have any night vision you might not really have too much of an option uh, similarly there's some stuff that's going to work for thermal that is not going to work for night vision uh, just a spoiler alert here, smoke still works under thermals. So that's something we'll get into in uh, the next video. Stay tuned for part two. I'll be releasing that probably um, around Memorial Day. So at the end of this week, I'll be releasing that video. Uh, i got another video coming out this week, just a fun video. Uh, doing a little review of a Chinese ration because, you know, we might end up eating those soon. But yeah. Until next time, guys, talk to you later. Bye.